Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's video, we're taking a look at the Trigicon Miniaturized Rifle Lock. Now, the first thing that came to most people's minds, mine included, when the MRO was announced was it's a direct competitor um, for a spot in Trigicon's line that they've never really had an optic to fill. If you think about your, your aim points and your EOTechs, they fill a very specific category. People think it's one or the other. Trigicon, the only offering they really had that kind of competed in that category was the SRS, which for some people was too big, the field of vision was too big, and it had some initial uh, problems with that first generation run. Um, that I don't know if Trigicon ever really recovered from as far as popularity was concerned. And the cost was very prohibitive for a lot of people to think, well, why spend $800 to $1,000 on an SRS when I can get a micro for $700 or I can get an EOTech for even less than that, depending on what model I get. So the MRO kind of falls in that category where it's going to become a direct competitor with the EOTech and the Aimpoint Micro line or the Pro line. Um, but obviously the question on everybody else, everybody's mind is, is it, is it worth the squeeze? It is, it is marginally cheaper than most of your Aimpoint Micro models. But is it something that um, is significantly advantageous enough that it's going to make, well, I need to sell my aim point and pick up one of these Trigicon MROs? Well, I first got my hands on it, decided I wanted to do a very thorough review. I could have had a, a brief review out much earlier, but I wanted to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, at this point, I've got over 3,000 rounds underneath it. Uh, I've taught a few classes with it. Um, and I've spent some time putting it on other weapons platforms just to really, really get a feel for the optic to see, is it significantly better? than the other optics out there, or is it just another really good choice for someone who's looking to get their first high quality optic? Now, I don't know why it took Trigicon so long um, to come up with an optic that kind of fit into this category, but if the design of the MRO is any inclination, maybe it was because they wanted to get things just right. One of the most ingenious features just right off the bat, besides the very wide field of vision uh, and the minimal footprint on the rifle, is the ambidextrous control knob. This is kind of brilliant. This is something that, that uh, hasn't been done, and it's something that just, to me, seems to be very common sense. If I'm on the gun, I can very easily make my adjustments. Even if I'm over here, or if I'm a left-handed shooter, it's very easy for me to work the knob. I've got eight brightness settings and I've got two off positions on the turn of the knob as I'll show you. Uh, to me it just makes a lot of sense just in the control system it's very intuitive. Uh, it makes a lot of sense and it looks like somebody put a little bit of thought into it. Now does that mean that other optics where you've got the control knob on the left or the right are bad? No, not necessarily, but this one just is a lot easier to work with. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to make adjustments and again it's not a huge deal, it's not a game changer, but it's something small and it's the first thing I noticed when I got my MRO. Now, the MRO is a 2 MOA dot. Uh, some people, you know, why didn't they go 1 MOA? They have a 1 MOA RMR. Uh, spending some time with Trigicon's 1 MOA RMR, I can tell you that I don't see a significant enough advantage over time with a 1 MOA versus a 2 MOA for what I normally use my rifle for. If I want to go really, really precise long distance fire, I should probably be using a magnified optic. So the 2 MOA dot is large enough that I'm going to pick it up quick, but it's small enough that if I have to reach out and touch something small, I can. Or if I have to go for precise fire, I can. So to me, the 2 MOA dot is, I think that's kind of the industry standard now in optics. We've learned a lot about dot size, and I think the 2 MOA is an excellent dot size. Now for adjustments, they are exposed, but they're recessed, meaning I can make adjustments on the fly, zeroing process with tools, wearing gloves, and I don't have to worry about little itty bitty caps, which I think is awesome. I also don't have to worry about um, uh, keeping up with those caps or keeping up with any kind of special tool I need to make those adjustments. So as far as the adjustment knobs are concerned, uh, initially I was I was kind of apprehensive about it because they are exposed and I'm just so used to other optics having captured or recessed, much more recessed adjustments. But 
they grew on me and throughout the process of the review over 3,000 rounds plus some time on the shotgun which I'll get to um, didn't have any problems maintaining zero and even when the gun was getting knocked around I didn't have any inadvertent contact that caused the zero to shift or it actually made adjustments when I didn't want it to Now from Trijicon, the MRO is available with three different mounts. Um, I got the co-witness height mount and I pretty much hated it right out of the box. Uh, it works, it, it, it's sturdy, um, it stays on the gun, and there's no movement, no play in it, it's not out of spec or anything like that. I just don't like it. It's like you know, taking the wrong exit on a road trip and end up having to eat McDonald's. It's gonna get you by, but you wanted something else. Um, so I reached out to ADM, American Defense Manufacturing. I had them send me out one of their, uh, well they, they sent me out one of their new mounts. Um, that they make for the MRO and it's got the same footprint as the Trijicon mount but it's quick release and I love quick release mounts because I may need to take the optic off the rifle for any number of reasons. Um, in a worst case scenario if I get a, a shattered glass and I want to flip up my backup sights I don't have that option with the Trijicon mount because I need a tool to remove it. So for me quick detach, lock in quick detach mounts always make a lot of sense. So one of the first things I did uh, I had about a thousand rounds on the Trijicon mount just to make sure the mount itself was good and it was maintained zero never had any problems with it. the optic did get knocked around a little bit um, and I didn't have any failure points on it but again it's like eating at McDonald's when I wanted something else um, the ADM mount I've had on for 2,000 rounds past that plus its time uh, on the shotgun which I'll get to uh, rock solid mount and it's definitely a really good addition to the MRO if you end up getting one The most remarkable thing to me about the optic is the field of vision. Uh, it's a 1 by 25 optic. You've got a very, very wide objective field of view on this thing. But it's not so wide that if your optic goes down, you can't ghost ring on closer intermediate range threats. Um, some other optics out there, like EOTECs, when you, if you're practicing or if you're, your optic just is an EOTEC, it just goes down and you have to shoot through the glass and kind of ghost ring with it. Uh, the EOTech's so wide that the further back you get from your, your target, your threat, the more difficult it is. With this, I've got a very, very wide field of vision, uh, like I said, 1 by 25, but it's not so significantly wide that I still can't use the optic as a ghost ring if I absolutely have to. In addition to that, I can see more of my objective through my optic, and the overall length cuts down significantly on tunnel vision. I really like the way the world looks through this optic. It does have a slight bluish tint to it, but running on multiple different types of targets, multiple colors, and just looking at the environment through it, that bluish tint doesn't really affect my ability to discern what color something actually is, if that's something that's very, very important to you. Dot size is crisp, clean, and in focus. Uh, I didn't experience any kind of blooming issues, and the brightness settings are fine enough that you see a significant difference, but they're not so gross that you go from kind of like, ah, it's not quite bright enough to, oh my God, that's too bright. Everything is graded out really, really well, even though there's only eight settings for brightness. Some of the small design features really catch my attention. Um, the glass is very well recessed. Your objective lens and your ocular lens are very recessed, um, which not only cuts down on the chances of inadvertent contact with gear causing damage to the glass, but it also uh, keeps a lot of the filth and debris and things you, you uh, that the optic can acquire just in daily use from really getting in there and building up. Um, and it does give you a watertight reservoir. The optic is waterproof to 30 meters, but it gives you a watertight reservoir for cleaning. So if you're going to use solvent or solution like that, you can kind of get a really good pool in there to eat away at whatever's on the lens, wipe it right out of there, and you're good to go. Uh, I don't know about as far as magnifiers go, if people are going to be able to use those flip-to-side magnifiers, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to. Uh, so if that's something you already use for your aim point or your tech or whatever you're using, if you're planning on picking up an MRO, I believe that's still going to be an option because you still got the same height. There might be some some compatibility issues that you'd have to address. I don't own a flip to side magnifier or one of those red dot magnifiers, so there was no way for me to really figure that out. So if that's a question you have, you'll probably have to reach out to Trijicon to get an answer for that. Um, the body is very robust, very well built. Um, I got to be honest, it's not 
very sexy. I'm just throwing that out there. And it doesn't matter. I don't care what my optics look like, really. Uh, but usually for most people, aesthetics is on the menu. It's probably the last thing as far as features you want, but it is important. Um, kind of looks like one of the Mario tubes from Mario Brothers, like do 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 do. It goes down the little green tube, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I didn't really let the um, uh, homely appearance of the optic dissuade me from from really wanting to check it out, and that really goes back to the fact that it's got such a really wide field of vision. Um, using it in low light uh, in conjunction with night vision and things of that nature, um, it really really shines. Now, talking specifically about that field of vision, one concern that people might have, and it's one of the concerns I initially had, is the field of vision going to be so big that snapping up on the optic, I'm going to have to swim my head a little bit and look for that dot. Am I, is it going to be right where I want it every single time? Uh, didn't have any issues. Um, shooting low light, shooting night vision, um, shooting in all kinds of different conditions, shooting in rain, shooting in bright sunlight. I never had any issues finding that dot. Every time I brought the cheek up, I looked at my threat, I looked at my target, bring the gun up and the dot would just appear right in front of my eye right where I want it to be so the objective size shouldn't shouldn't be an issue for anyone uh, and if it is it might be more of a stock issue cheek weld you know lining your eye up behind the rifle than it is uh, specifically about the optics so as far as the field of vision goes it's great I already you know obviously talked a little bit about that but it's uh, it's not so wide that you're gonna have to swim and look Trijicon already has a really good reputation for making highly durable optics. Uh, you think about the ACOG, one of the most durable optics out there. Uh, they're pretty much indestructible, um, unless you're really, really trying really hard to break it. Uh, then you've got the AccuPowers, you've got the AccuPoints. You've got an entire line of optics that are known for being very, very rugged. Uh, they make one of the more durable um, miniaturized red dots, the RMR out there. It's uh, got a really unique design that, that helps protect it from, from impact. Uh, so is the MRO up to snuff when it comes to that? Well. Just general recoil on a 5.56, probably not going to find out. So after I was satisfied with its performance on the rifle, uh, I went ahead and threw it on a 12 gauge um, and put 200 rounds through it just to kind of see if I could knock that zero out of there. Uh, if the increased recoil pulse from a 12 gauge versus from a 5.56 or 308 was really going to affect and cause me to lose zero. Um, so I zeroed it at 25 meters, fired 200 rounds, uh, did a group in the front, group in the back with a uh, um, flight control slug and maintained zero. So the elephant in the room, uh, is the MRO an aimpoint killer? Is it a Neotech killer? Um, I don't like doing comparisons. I like doing reviews. I like reviewing products, let them stand on their own merit. But since it's going to come up and since they're kind of in the same category, people are going to want my opinion on that. Um, and, I'll, and, and I'll give it for the sake of this. I don't consider that the MRO has enough distinct advantages over an aimpoint to put aimpoint out of business or put Eotech out of business. Those optics have their own personal advantages and disadvantages based on you know your mission and your needs. Uh, that being said, if you need a new optic, uh, I highly suggest picking up the MRO, especially if you already have an Aimpoint or Neotech, to give you something different to work with to see if it's going to work for you, for your lifestyle, or for your occupation. Um, I consider the field of vision uh, on the MRO, uh, the ambidextrous adjustment knob and the external adjustments, and just the, 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 the robust nature of the optic itself, the durability of it, to be significant advantages enough for me to say, I have enough Aimpoints. Uh, my next couple purchases will probably be MROs. I have my one, I need one more, and I'll pick that up. As far as price goes, um, it comes in a little higher than your Aimpoint Pro, a little under your Micro, um, and comparably priced to some EOTechs. So it's not significantly cheaper or significantly more expensive. So if you already are looking in that market, in that price range, the MRO is definitely something you should pick up. And I think you'll find that it does have its own distinct advantages. It's not just, an, it's not just Trijicon saying, well, we've got one of those too. It does have some significant advantages that aren't just advantages for the sake of being different. 
um, their thought at well thought out um, changes and redesigns to the basic idea of a tubular red dot optical system. Uh, so again, if you're looking for a new optic, um, go ahead and pick one up. If you already have aim points, there's no reason to sell them and buy this. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you may feel differently. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.